let's imagine that I want my users to be able to choose from a drop list a choice of customer names, and then given that particular choice, I want them to have a filtered list of only the contact names within that customer. Also, let's imagine that I have a particular user to choose from the state. See here I have a, a radio button linked to the, my state variable, and from there to be able to choose a drop list of existing cities. Now the way I've done that is I've created a, a add-in button in, on side of here and linked this to Pigeon Coop 27. So let's go ahead and find my coops. Now, in this example here, we're going to be using SQL. Notice that I have several different coops to choose from. I have up to 50, so I could have 50 different macro buttons. In this case, I'm going to go to Pigeon Coop 27. And you see here that I have a simple query here to query my customer's database for all customer names. And I have the ability to enter in my login information down from here. Given this particular choice, I can always click Test. And you see that the pigeonhole gives me the ability to see what my options are. Now the next step is a little bit more interesting because as you recall, I want to be able to filter my contact names based on my, the choice that the user did for the customer name. And the way I do this is inside of my curly brackets of my where statement, I can go ahead and say, okay, look at the customer name variable and put that value in for the filter here. And to test that, it gets a little bit more interesting because now you see the pigeonhole needs to know that information. So for just for testing purpose, I'm gonna go ahead and just type all stars. And now I get a nice result. So it's a good way to test. So in this case, you see that I'm, I'm querying based on a previous selection from my drop list, but I don't have to necessarily have it on the drop list. So in this case here, you see that I'm looking for the state variable on my data card to populate my city. So I don't necessarily have to have that piece of information to define earlier in my uh, pigeonhole list. So let's go ahead and click OK and show you what this looks like. So here's my data card, and I'm going to go ahead and choose Iowa and go and click get my customers. And what you'll see here is this is my list of all my customer names. And this is really, you could have done this with native enterprise because enterprise does give you the ability to pick and choose uh, a single query, but it doesn't have the ability to query based on other selections already for this file. Now also notice that this is yellow. And what the yellow is telling me is that at this point in time, I don't yet have enough information to fully populate this drop list because as you recall, this is coming from the customer name. So let's go ahead and pick a customer name. And as soon as I choose a customer name, watch what happens. Now my drop list has this up and I can actually pick now from my list of my tigers, or if I choose the marshals, I can get a completely different list. Now this entire time the city has been black because city is coming from another place already on the data card. So now I have a choice of my different types of cities. I can go and click okay and it populates my dialog box. Conversely, if I chose Ohio, you'll notice that my choice is automatically updated for, for me. So my users can pick in any way that he wants after I have all the information that I need to pre-populate this. 